Quality, value, size, and momentum are all examples of factors that some investors are using to beef up their portfolio returns. Today's ETF battle is an audience-requested quadruple header between factor ETFs from BlackRock, Fidelity, J.P. Morgan, and Van Eck. So who wins the battle? Find out right after this. Welcome to ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge, and it's great to see you. This is Season 4, and if you're new to the show, so glad to have you with us. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and for longtime viewers, welcome back. Now, this is the place where we congregate to analyze and dissect your ETF matchups, and the whole point here is to help you make better investment decisions. So if there's an ETF battle that you'd like us to do, please send me your ETF ticker symbols in the comment section below, or on our X feed, at ETF Guide, we could do double, triple, and quadruple headers, so make it good. And while you're down there, uh, visit the description section below of this video. We've got important links to our program judges, plus we've got a link to our program sponsor, Direction. Lots of good stuff down there, so don't miss it. Today's ETF battle was requested by a viewer named Beer Gel. And it features four factor ETFs. We've got Qual from Black, BlackRock, FLRG from Fidelity, JQA from JP Morgan, and Moat from Van Eck. And thank you very much, Beer Gel, for that ETF battle suggestion. Uh, hit the comment section below to claim your prize. You get your choice of an ETF battle shirt or coffee mug. Judging today's high stakes contest, we've got Cynthia Murphy with the ETF Think Tank. And Mike Akins with ETF Action. Great to see both of you. Welcome back. It's great to be here, Ron. Thanks for having me. Hey, Ron. Happy to be here. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then mystery. Mystery is where you, our judges, get to pick a single factor or maybe multiple factors that you feel are pertinent to and crucial to today's contest. Now, you can also nominate wildcard ETFs as you feel there's better choices elsewhere or opt for split decisions I've got the scorekeeping chores, and at the end of the show, we will declare an overall winner. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So, it's sisters before misters. Let's kick things off with the first category, cost. Cynthia, please get us started. So in this uh, in this category, uh, the prices are pretty different when it comes to expense ratios and management fees. Uh, you range anywhere from 12 basis points to 46 basis points, 12 being JQA from JP Morgan, 46 being Moat at the other end. Uh, so, you know, obviously JQA wins just at face value. Uh, both JQA and Qual are very similar in this category, so it's almost a split decision there in the, in the fact that it's 12 versus 15. Uh, Qual is a much bigger fund, it's a $30 billion fund, so trading execution is nice and clean, uh, spreads are tight, so there's a trading advantage in terms of cost uh, over time on Qual. Uh, but, you know, for the purposes of expense ratios, I'm going to give it to JQA as the absolute cheapest in this category. Thank you, Cynthia. Mike, you're up next. How do you see it when it comes to cost? Yeah, I mean, I don't have much to add. Cynthia hit all the, the important points. I agree that, uh, you know, you can look at Qual or JQA as being the, the cheapest. They're three basis points difference. So they're, those are the two winners of the category. One thing I would add is, unlike a lot of times where I say expense ratio is not a big deal, this category is a little more important because they are core strategies they they have pretty high overlap with the broader market um so this is a they're designed to be cores of your portfolio where you're going to be in them for a long time they're going to have short small tracking area to the overall market so expense ratios are going to add up over time so it's a little more important than normal um when we're doing these battles and i just thought i'd point that out that takes us next to exposure strategy mike you're still up so give us your analysis which of these four etf stands out yeah so i mean they all have Unique, I mean, they're all factor strategies. Uh, Qual and JQA are specifically designed to go after quality. Quality meaning normally when you think about quality, you're talking about return on equity, um, your leverage ratios such as debt to equity, your profitability rate ratios like net margin. And Qual and JQA both screen extremely well in those. Um, I would say the bigger driving factor for these funds, um, especially on a year-to-date performance, which I'll get into later, is size. There is a, a significant size difference when you go through these portfolios. And what I mean by that is 
um, when you look at the size of the company, right? The, the weighted average market capitalization of the companies inside of this, the, you know, you have SPY, which is the S&P 500, has a weighted average market cap of $650 billion. And then your next two closest in this factor category are going to be Qual and FLRG, which are both over 500 billion. So very large cap names gets all the way down to 165 billion weighted average market cap. So still very large companies, but not as you can tell through that weighting factor, not all of the really big names that have performed this year. And that shows in your year to date performance. So I think that's really important to note when you're looking at that. Um, when I look at these, um, I think Moat has the, the simplest structure and looking at the Morningstar wide Moat rating. However, I actually like um, Qual from a standpoint of if I'm using a core product, it has 100 names versus 50 names in Moat. It's going to have a little less tracking error, a little bit broader representation of the market. I might think of Moat to be a little bit more of a tilt um, on that on that perspective, whereas Qual can be thought of as more of a core holding. So I like that quality um, base to my portfolio. And for this category, I'm thinking these are all core type strategies. So I'm going to go with QAL. They're all pretty good. Um, and we'll talk about performance risk in a second, but I think Qual has the most um, dynamic from a standpoint of core that I'm looking for in this battle. Cynthia, your turn. How do you see it when it comes to exposure strategy? You know, I, I completely agree with Mike. I, I think, uh, you know, in the battle for quality, Qual and JQA are almost identical, very little differences in terms of construction. What I like about both of them actually is that uh, they are designed to give you almost market-like exposure. So they're comparing and they're looking for quality factors of companies within their sectors. So it's a very peer-to-peer -peer comparison in search of that quality screen. So you're comparing apples to apples within sectors and both portfolios make sure you, you maintain you know, an all sector allocation very market-like, so there's not a lot of crazy sector bets here. It's they're both very clean approaches uh, to to the quality factor. Uh, FLRG is a completely different beast. It's actually a multi-factor ETF. It's not just quality. It actually has momentum, low vol. Um, and uh, value in there as well. So it doesn't really compare when it comes to the approach of if you're looking for a quality screen. And mode, exactly what Mike said, it's a completely different beast. It's very concentrated. It's almost like, uh, you know, a, a packed punch thematic play within the quality factor. So it could be almost a complement to your broad quality exposure. So if you're just looking for an easy button quality allocation, I think you can't go wrong with Qual or JQA. Uh, I do like Qual a little bit better, uh, but uh, you know, uh, Moat is a, is a great you know power packed uh, quality punch in a different type of way, very concentrated. The next category is performance, and uh, this is where it really gets interesting. Which of these funds stands out? Cynthia, give us your analysis, please, on performance. Yeah, this one, I found it a little bit all over the place. So I, depending on time frames, depending on what you're looking at. So I think uh, now one year time window, Qual wins this category. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with it's just the exposure to tech. It's what's been driving the market is a very specific segment. These stocks are all in there. If you look at top 10, actually, the overlap is pretty big between JQA and Qual. It's about seven out of 10 names are the exact same. Uh, so it's tech driven. Both these funds are heavy tech. Qual has outperformed a little bit because it's a little more tech, a little bit less financials. JQA is a little more financials and the other two are lagging significantly this year. Now, if you go three year, five year, uh, I think Moat has a really interesting performance. In fact, Moat has outperformed the S&P 500 since inception. Uh, so, you know, over time, it has really strong legs and it has that valuation screen as well. So you're never, you're trying not to overpay for quality names. And over time, it shows that in the performance. Um, so I don't know how to, to give you an answer on this one. If you want short term performance, it's qual. If it's longer term performance, I'd give it to Moat. Thank you, Cynthia. You're up next, Mike. How do you see it when it comes to performance? Yeah, it, it's a tough one. I mean, they've all performed pretty well. Uh, FLRG is lagging this year um, at 5.69. A lot of that can be the size exposure. Um, this year, more than any year um, on record, if you don't own a significant amount or overweight those top 10 holdings in the market, you are losing. Um, I'll talk about a little bit more of that 
in my mystery category. But I think in general, if we're looking at this from a performance perspective, Qual and Moat actually have a 10 year outperformance relative to the S&P 500. Um, that's really, really rare in this category, um, kind of the factor large cap category. Um, you see it a little bit more in mid cap, small caps or international, but within the large cap names, historically very few of these factor ETFs have outperformed over full market cycle. So hats off to both of those strategies. Um, I tend to like quality um, as my winner for performance because it's done a little quality being qual, Q-U-A-L, um, because it's done a little less tracking error, a little bit more consistency to those out returns. Um, however, um, like Cynthia said, it does come with some some pretty big bets um, relative to that, but so does Moat, right? Moat right now is, you know, nearly 10 12, 13% underweight technology, and it's overweight financials and healthcare to make up for that. Um, so that's what I mean when I say it, it's gonna have a little, qual is gonna have a little less tracking here in my opinion, because it looks a little bit more like the market. Um, and that's why I give it my winner. Um, but it also just comes down to how you're gonna use it. Um, if it's a core replacement qual, if it's more to um, get a certain factor, I think Moat with its concentrated 50 names um, is obviously done extremely well and, and deserves uh, a look. All right. Our judges are bringing it as far as their analysis. Great job so far. That takes us next to the mystery battle category. And uh, this is our Alfred Hitch Hitchcock category because it's a mystery. It's a surprise. What will our judges come up with? Mike, you're up first. So give us uh, your mystery battle category. What is it and which of these ETFs stands out? So my mystery category is literally what I've been talking about the whole day for multi-factor large cap is size. Um, I think there, if you were to look at the market year to date, there are a handful of what we classify as large cap, U.S. large cap ETFs that are outperforming, and every single one of them has something in common. They are overweight or at least equal weight the largest names in the market, you know, the Magnificent Seven or whatever, you know, acronym you want to give them, the mega cap names, the Apples, the Amazons, the Metas. Um, that are do, they're adding all the, the alpha to the market year to date. Um, and I think that's something that people need to understand when they're looking at that core category. They need to understand how much risk are you willing to take from a tracking error perspective. The less you look like the market, the more tracking on you take on. And when you have years like this, historically, um, you know, academics would tell you that a size tilt is going to give you some outperformance. It has not been the case this year. It hasn't been the case really for the last decade, but going back 20, 30 years, that size tilt has helped. But I think looking at that, you can see the difference in these re returns of these, just these four ETFs, just simply by looking by their weighted average market capitalization. Um, to that extent, you know, Qual has um, a very large weight to those big names um, and it's gonna give you a little less tracking here. It's important to note that can change. Qual is looking for quality. Generally speaking, mega cap names are going to meet those those screenings on margins and um, leverage and things of that nature, but not always. And so the, it can change. And these these all of these strategies have a fair amount of turnover within their names. But right now, it's pretty much um, lined up to the market a little bit better. So from that size component um, as a core ballast to my portfolio, I like Qual. Um, I think. You know, you can run into a little bit more tracking error with the others, um, just looking through to the portfolio. So I'm going to go with Qual, but I think the bigger takeaway for this mystery category is when you look at these categories, you know, U.S. large cap is a great example. It's huge. There are, you know, um, 500 ETFs that kind of fit in that U.S. large cap arena. And weighted average market capitalization is anywhere from, you know, 55 billion all the way up to 750 billion. And that size component is going to have just as much of a fact as whether you're screening for quality or value or growth. And people should really make sure they're, they're checking that with these, these types of factor strategies. Solid points. Thank you, Mike. Cynthia, you're up next. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? So I, I took it in a different direction, although I, I love everything Mike just said. Uh, super, super valid points. Um, I was thinking in terms of portfolio fit or even intention. Uh, I just I just read literally recently um, a study from Morningstar that's exactly about this conversation about quality versus moat, 
And I thought it was so interesting as a way to capture the essence of this, this battle is that quality tends to be backward looking. How a company has performed, how a return on equity is delivering, the path of, of those earnings. Where moat is a forward-looking measure of quality, is expected like how sustainable is this company's competitive advantage? So you know they frame it was a, it's a beautiful study that shows how you're measuring quality by looking to the past versus you're measuring quality by looking to the future. So what are you trying to achieve when you're choosing a quality ETF in a portfolio? If you're looking just for the exposure to the factor. Uh, I, I love qual for all the reasons we've discussed so far. Uh, I do like the notion that this is, uh, you know, forward looking and Moat is a phenomenal product in that space. It, it looks at five different sustainability metrics in terms of quality, including intangibles, including scale and network effect. Uh, it really is. It's looking at companies that should have a competitive edge 10, 20 years out. So it's a, it's a, it's a different way to look at quality. Now, you know, could you have just moat, not qual? I actually think they're perfect together. I think they're great compliments. Uh, but I would just say as, as a, as a conversation, you know, what is it that you want to achieve by introducing this factor to your mix? And how do you want to slice that? Um, so I think fit is an important thing. Um, I don't know that I can give a Mr. Category uh, a split decision, so I'm going to tilt to Moat for the sake of discussion because I think Moat is a great product. I like the idea of looking ahead. All right. Duly noted. Thank you, Cynthia. Well, this takes us to the part of the program where we're going to give our judges one final chance to give us their overall winner. How will this go down? So, Cynthia, give it to us. Uh, this goes down for me this way. Uh, qual is your easy button, smart button choice for a broad quality allo factor allocation. Uh, I, the product is good. The price is right. The volume is great. Tra transaction costs, trading activity is great. Um, if you want to actually like really go deep and a more concentrated effort, a punch, I think Moat is a phenomenal product. So I would give split decision between Qual and Moat. Mike, your final chance to give us your overall winner. For this category, I'm going to give it quality because I think it fits that, um, that concept of a core building block within your uh, U.S. equity allocation. But I'm going to throw a wild card in there for this category. And that is, I'm going to throw in the S&P 500, whether it's VOO, IVV, SPLG. Um, this is a category that's historically very, very difficult to outperform over multiple cycles. You actually do have two in there that have done it this time. Um, is it sustainable? I don't know. Um, is it materially different? Is their outperformance really large? No, it's not. It's not a big driving factor in that portfolio. And when you're looking at a core building block within your portfolio, I think it's hard just to beat two basis points beta or three basis points beta. Um, or if you're just looking at total market, go with VTI or ITOT or something of that nature. And if you really want exposure to something um, and looking for alpha generation or income generation or downside protection, um, overlay some more of the other pure factor strategies that have um, historically provided um, volatility, right? If you look at looking for alpha, the only way to do it is to add risk, right? If you're looking for downside, the only way to do it is reduce risk. And if you want to do that, I think you're better off mixing a core two basis point beta with some high concentration names. I'm not a huge fan of the broad-based multi-factor or even um, – just in the sense of a core building block. So my wild card winner is um, any one of your core beta ETFs that you're going to pay three basis points or less on for this category. You've made my job very difficult, Mike. <laughs> oh my gosh. Both of you have made it difficult, but your analysis outstanding nonetheless. So how will Ron score this? Well, according to my battle scorecard, this is going to be a split decision between Qual from BlackRock and Moat from Van Eck. Those were the two ETFs, by the way, that got the most votes from our judges in this contest. And uh, they raised some awesome, awesome points. I mean, so many great takeaways. I mean, the one thing that stands out to me is maybe, depending on how you're using these ETFs, maybe you use both. 
Maybe it's not a question of one or the other, but both. Again, it depends on the application of how you're using this in the context of your own investment portfolio. So some forethought has to go into that before buying any of these ETFs. And uh, Cynthia raising the point that uh, Moat, she liked the fact that it has that quality forward-looking bias, whereas a lot of these quality screens tend to be backward-looking. I thought that was a, a great point. And then, of course, uh, she highlighted Moat's awesome performance. Mike pointed out the same thing. Moat and Qual both outperforming S&P 500 over a 10-year period. Um, have these funds even been around 10 years? Uh, wow, that's pretty amazing. 10 years have flown by uh, on the calendar. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible. I remember just yesteryear when these funds were rookies. But um, that was a, certainly a great point. And, uh, of course, again... Uh, our judges laid it out. I think they gave us some great analysis, many wonderful things to think about. Um, and again, Mike and uh, Cynthia, great job. Keep up the good work. We couldn't have done it without you. Thanks, Ron. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Ron. It's great being here. Well, thanks again, Cynthia and Mike, for your outstanding, timely insight. Be sure to visit the description section below. We've got links to both of our program judges, along with a link to our program sponsor, Direction. Which ETF battle would you like to see on the next episode? Let us know. Hit the comment section below with your ETF tickers or find us at ETF Guide. That's our X feed. I'm Ron Legi. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time. <laughs>